Yeah, they have to pass. They get first dibs. So what advice could you give to someone who's trying to uh, make similar music and tour but has absolutely no uh, capability to do it, you know, no knowledge on playing guitar, doing vocals, etc.? Just start doing it. Eventually you'll, you'll learn uh, from all of your mistakes. Uh, uh, I'm sure every other band in the, since the creation of bands has made tons and tons of mistake, mistakes and you just keep just keep pushing forward. Keep making music. Keep recording. I remember when uh, I was in high school uh, putting out the first Nunslaughter demo, everybody said, that sounds like shit. And, and we were like, I don't care. And we just dubbed hundreds of them and gave them away and sold them. I think it was three bucks a piece we were selling these cassettes for. Um, and uh, uh, got to just keep pushing forward. I, I, uh, I think it was actually Dave Grohl that said, uh, it doesn't matter. Just, just pound it out and keep making it might be the shittiest music anyone has ever made but the next one will be a slightly better and the next one after that will be better just keep going forward so what's something unexpected you had to overcome what was something I, oh, to, I so, unexpected? <laughs> What's something unexpected that you had to overcome being a part of Nuts Honor? Uh, what was something that was unexpected that I had to overcome being in Nuts Honor? I think uh, playing an instrument uh, and singing, uh, getting in front of uh, people, performing. Originally, I was the original bass player in Nunslaughter, and I was happy to let somebody else sing and be the front of the band. And whenever he, uh, Greg, ended up deciding he didn't want to do it anymore, we were left with uh, uh, no vocalist, and I just said, I, I got to do it. And that was something I really had a difficulty overcoming, being the front of the, the band, the voice of the band, writing people, telling them, that uh, you know, I'm I'm the new correspondent that they're gonna have to deal with, and um, that was that was difficult. And in in fronting the fronting the band is is it's a lot of, a lot of shit you gotta put up with. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if you're if you're uh, if you're shy, it's a good way to get out of that because you got it. You're, I'm sitting here doing an interview, and if you're shy, you probably have difficulty with it. But there's no way I could fun. I play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a bass player, I could be real shy. Playing in the mix in real Way back there. You'd never get any pictures of you. You'd never get anything. No, that's well. That's the drummer. Usually, it's so fucking dark for the drummer. Well, and, then, and then on record, bass, they don't even fucking, they don't even give them a chance. To yeah. Turn, turn it down. All right, last three, two. <clears throat> The logistics of setting a tour and travel, what is the worst thing on tour that you've uh, come in contact with? <clears throat> the worst thing that I've come in contact with on tour was uh, we did a tour of um, uh, Finland, and um, it was uh, that it was light most of the time that you were there, so it was a, a huge adjustment as far as your like biological, you wanted to go to sleep, you know? and. Um, and we ended up, one of the places that we were staying was a flop house, and they did have a shower, but it was, there was no heat. There was no hot water. So we went down, because it would have been days that we had, had since we hadn't showered, and uh, to put the shower head on your head, it gave you an instant headache, like you're sucking on a, an icy, you know, and you get the brain for, like it was. It's it was so bone chillingly cold. I mean, it had to be one degree above freezing. It was like ice coming out of there, and that was. And then we ended up. I ended up sleeping next to some, what I think were homeless people, uh, which is that's not necessarily bad. But um, we were in this house, and we're we're all sleeping, and there was people upstairs fucking, and. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to sleep, and I'm just like, this, what, what am I doing with my life? But anyway, it got better the next day. There was, you know. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, that's a good story, man. Jesus. <laughs> All right, last well, I didn't know who was fucking. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I had that happen here when I was younger, man. <clears throat> my friend was getting with 
this chick. I'm like, bro, I'm fucking still here. Like, come on. Last thing. What do you think is the most roaring part about doing everything DIY such as this show? The most ro roaring? No, rewarding. Rewarding. Th what is the most rewarding thing about doing shows DIY? Um, is that you can, uh, one, you're, uh, you're, you're your own master and you are control of your uh, uh, progress. The harder you work, the more rewarding it is. Um, if, uh, if I was to put it all up to someone else, uh, I don't think you appreciate it enough when something is handed to you. So you just got to go out there and just work for it. And doing things DIY, uh, everything from, especially when we were young, photocopy and demo uh, tapes and dubbing them yourself and uh, printing silk screening shirts in your garage, um, sending out flyers that people don't give a shit about. It didn't matter. You just kept, kept moving forward, kept putting it out. And that's what's most rewarding about being, uh, doing things DIY. And like this show, this is put on not by a professional promoter. It, it's put on by a, a, a friend and a fan. And he did an excellent job and he always does an excellent job in finding those people that you know, if you work with good people, good things will happen. And that's what's great about doing it DIY.